was Jesus based off the pagan deity Zalmoxis. Richard Carrier has argued there was a Thracian cult that worshipped a deity who was once a man and was resurrected, and that this may have inspired the Jewish writers to craft the story of Jesus' resurrection, or that it is at least evidence there was a general theme of resurrected gods in the ancient world. In other words, he doesn't claim Jesus was directly copied from Zalmoxis, but that there are clear resurrection parallels, and this is evidence resurrection beliefs were not just Jewish, but were prevalent in the pagan world as well. So to deal with this issue, we need to look at our earliest sources and the limited scholarship on this deity. First, the Zalmoxis cult did not leave any sources for us, so all our information comes from secondhand sources and critics, and the information varies. Plato doesn't give us much information on him. He says Zalmoxis was considered a god and king among his people and taught how to heal the body and soul that was different from what Greek physicians taught. So very general information and not much to go on. Later on, Strabo says that Zalmoxis traveled around for a while learning about celestial signs and then returned home. Zalmoxis then convinced the king to allow them to rule together because the people thought he could report on the will of the gods. He was first considered a priest and later on considered a god himself. He then spent the rest of his life in a cave and not speaking to many people. So again, just very general information and no clear evidence of a resurrection belief. Most of our information on this cult comes from the earlier account of Herodotus. Carrier believes Herodotus reported the Thracians believe Zalmoxis was resurrected. But if we look at the actual account, we don't actually see resurrection or anything similar to the practices in Christianity or Judaism. Herodotus says that the Thracians believe that they never really die, but when they depart this life, they go to Zalmoxis. First, this doesn't sound like resurrection, but something more like what Socrates believed, that when we die physically, we go to a different place to live. As Mircea Laid said, it is always a question of a blissful post-existence in an other world that does not belong to profane geography, but that is not one of the underground infernos to which the shades of the uninitiated go. Even these fragmentary, and to some extent, contradictory accounts enable us to discern that the cult instituted by Zalmoxis was centered upon an experience that can be termed eschatological, since it assures the initia of the blissful post-existence in a paradisal beyond. So the Zalmoxis cult was most likely more Platonic than Jewish. Early Christians believed we would come back to this world in bodily form, and this place would one day be heaven, not that we depart from it like in a Platonic or Gnostic sense. He goes on to also say they ritually sacrifice a willing participant every five years, and then tells a story that Zalmoxis taught the Thracians for several years, until one day he built an underground chamber, and lived there for three years until he finally came out and the Thracians were fooled and used it as proof to what Zalmoxis taught. But if you look at this account, even though Herodotus was a skeptic of this cult, he never reported that they believed he died physically and came back to life in bodily form. He only seems to imply that when they physically die, they continue to exist somewhere else, which was a common belief to many pagans in the ancient world. And as what Mercia Laid concluded was the most likely belief in his study of the Zalmoxis cult. What was distinct to the Christians was their rejection of this and their adherence to the idea they were meant to live physically on earth for eternity. This is quite different to the Platonic idea or what seems to be happening with the Zalmoxis theology. This correlates to a later source from Emperor Julian who reported that Trajan said the Thracians just believed that upon death they would change their residency. Not that they would resurrect later, Carrier is imposing resurrection beliefs onto the Zalmoxis cult. They never report this or preach that this is what happened to Zalmoxis, only that when they die, they go to live elsewhere with Zalmoxis, which is far too general of a belief to say it inspired Christ's resurrection account. But doesn't the later Christian critic Celsus compare Jesus' resurrection with what happened to Zalmoxis? Well, no, he says, come now, let us grant to you that the prediction was actually uttered. Yet how many others are there who practice such juggling tricks in order to deceive their simple hearers and who make gain by their deception, as was the case, they say, 
with Zalmoxis and Schizia, the slave of Pythagoras. Celsus doesn't say that Zalmoxis was resurrected, but that he just generally played a juggling trick. And Celsus believes Jesus did something similar. This seems to be just a general idea of someone fooling their followers, not giving details on how they were fooled, or what they were fooled into believing. If Celsus' source was Herodotus, then they were just fooled into thinking they would leave this world when they die and go to live with Zalmoxis, not that they would resurrect. Either way, Celsus doesn't say what specifically the Zalmoxis cult taught, and we can't impose resurrection onto his words, especially if earlier sources did not report this. So our information on Zalmoxis is truly insufficient to conclude they believed in resurrection. As Mercia Laid said, we do not know to what extent the initiary and eschatological structure of Zalmoxis mystery, as it can be discerned in Herodotus' account, survived in Strabo's day. To the best of our knowledge, their beliefs seemed to more align with their pagan counterparts, that they would simply leave this world and go to live in another realm forever. As N.T. Wright noted, this was contradictory to the beliefs of Christians and Jews who thought their destiny was to reign in this universe for eternity. And on top of that, we have no reason to think Christian authors ever heard of Zalmoxis, let alone borrowed their beliefs from them. Their beliefs seem to be Jewish in origin. So even if there was evidence which proved the Thracians believed in resurrection, correlation would not be causation. We need evidence of borrowing, and vague similarities do not cut it. So since that is the case, there is no evidence Jesus was just a myth based on Zalmoxis.